and we're back with a relatively diverse category. Um, okay, that's not super diverse. It's really three pieces of equipment. We've got the Class Jaguar 900 Cargo uh, Multi Fruit with all of its attachments here. We've got the Forscrit E something or another 281 <laughs> and its attachments. And we got the Class Quantum 3800K. These are all foragers of various description. So, um, they're really competing against the in-game piece of equipment. Let's go with the class first. It is a trailer, so it's all, all it's going to do is it collect what you've already cut. Um, in that regard, it wins the award for the trailer category of the foragers. Um, it's going to do its job. It's going to forage what you put out there. Um, and it does, it does a good job. It has a collapsible upper structure. It um, allows you to double its volume. Uh, yeah, it works. I use it on my, my play farm. And uh, I, I think it's a great piece of equipment. So definitely a, an award in the trailer division of this category. That leaves the Class Jaguar and the Forscrit 281 to compete against the in-game thing, the Crone Big X. Um, price over value, I guess. I mean, the Forscrit, the Forscrit's going to work well. It has its own hitch, so you can haul its own trailer. It's got all the attachments necessary for the, all the various things that you could possibly want to cut with it it's cheap it's uh it's cheap he says not remembering the price it is eleven thousand dollars plus call it a grand and a quarter for a head um versus the expensive chrome big x so it gets you into the foraging a little bit sooner uh for that uh big plus i mean I, that's important the 900 Jaguar cargo is nice because it does it all. I mean, it does it all. One, it's got a head for every single fruit in the game. Uh, you you want to cut grass, you can cut grass. You want to do grain, you can do grain. You want to do uh, corn, you can do corn. You can do soybeans, you can... Soybeans? No. Uh, sunflowers. You can do whatever you want and that is great great um, it has its own inboard in interior cargo which is excellent you can hire a worker run around um, it's excellent it's also giant it's also is it expensive derp, 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 derp. Yeah, it's also expensive. I figured it was. Um, it's an expensive piece of equipment, so it's sort of like your step up above the Chrome Big X. It's difficult to drive because um, it is six-wheel steering. It's difficult to get into a lot of sheds because it is kind of tall. When it comes down to it, I'm going to give an award to the Forescript. I'm usually not a Forescript kind of guy, but... This little force grit, it's just a neat little piece of equipment. And the engine sounds like, you know, a dying force grit. So that, that's neat as well. Um, and the, the various implements are cheap. The, the equipment itself is cheap. So I'm going to give it an award. It gets the award in the self-propelled category of foraging. I'm going to give this guy an honorable mention. It's, it's extremely expensive. It's extremely large. Um, so you really can only use it on a larger farm. Though it has a lot of, it's got a lot of plus sides. It's not to say that it's a terrible thing. It's definitely not terrible. That's why it gets an honorable mention. It is a nice piece of equipment. It's just, it's just the, the force grid is so perfect for those starting out. You start out on your farm, you need to use do foraging, you can use the little force grid and boom, 
You got it, Forge. So there you go. And the class Quantum gets the award for the self-propelled category. Or not the self-propelled, the trailer category. Force Grit gets the award for the self-propelled category. Uh, 900 Cargo gets the honorable mention. All right, we'll be back with our next mod category. Hello and welcome to the poop category. <laughs> really nothing else to call this. This is the poop category. The uh, Abbey, uh, it's just a freaking mess. I bought stuff and stuff just got slotted everywhere. Um, the Abbey over there and the Abbey over here. These are the winners from season whatever. Um, they're good. They're nice. I mean, they're not perfect. They don't beat the in-game stuff necessarily to death. But they're still decent vehicles. Two liquid manure handling vehicles out of the mod contest. And these are, there's a Zune Hammer and there's the Fellbinder. Uh, which is one of, must be this one here. Um, yeah, it would be this one. So these two go together. Um, and they go together with this thing here. And then the Zune Hammer is the yellow, the blue, that tank there, that thing there, and a bunch of other stuff I didn't buy. I had trouble with this during the mod spotlight, and you guys were nice enough to provide some videos to show me how to properly use these. So I went in and made sure that they all worked, and they, they work. And once you learn how they work, they're fine. They make sense. But it's that phase of learning how they work that can be so extremely frustrating. That being said, they're excellent pieces of equipment. Um, the the Fellbinder, uh, it crabs, which is, is done to prevent compression of the, or extra compression of the field. Um, the Zune Hammer has, I mean, all kinds of gadgets for all kinds of things that you want to do. You can really, it creates the realism. The, if you're looking for the realism, this creates the realism on a level that isn't available using the in-game equipment or even the Abbey Manure handling pack. That being said, if you don't want the difficulty of the realism, these packs can overwhelm you. Especially the Zune Hammer pack. However, what are we going to do about awarding these guys? Well, I'm going to give them both an award. They're both really good packs. But it's going to be an award with sort of like that asterisk thing. It's an award saying, if you don't want it to be complicated, go get the Abbey Manure Handling Pack. Because it's not complicated. So there we go. Uh, it's an award for the Zune Hammer Manure Handling Pack. And it is also an award for the Feldbinder Manure Handling Pack. But you didn't see that one coming, did you? All right, we'll be back with our next mod category. And we're back in the ever-popular grain transport. Um, it includes silage as well, which is this thing over here. It's facing backwards because it does a dance every time that it's spawned in or reset. Um, this is actually a silage trailer for collecting silage. Um, it dances. It plays in the ground when it gets reset. I'm giving it a, a dishonorable mention. All right. Um, we had uh, a few things. We had this this shorter trailer here, this shorter agro liner, which had a, a cover on it, which was awesome. We have this cat, which is a rebranded agro liner with increased capacity. We, this, we have a flygle here, which actually has an extra top thing that goes on it. We've got the uh, Fortuna, which is, uh, yeah, which is that. We have the Australian trailer here, which allowed me to make one giant road train. And then we have these, which are the double B trailers that allow you to also kind of construct some sort of road train type thing. All right. <clears throat> what are we going to do about this? Um, these guys right here, I'm going to start with these two. Uh, I'm just going to give them mentions. This one tips through its back, which is annoying. Um, I'd rather have it just side tip. They're also overly shiny. Um, one of them, I can't remember which one right now. 
I think it's probably that one. One of them, I just can't remember which one, one of them um, just danced all over my farm and was just an annoyance. I ended up selling it before I sold the other one because I detached it from a truck and it would just start rotating. And that annoyed me, so there you go. I'm just going to give them a mention. Uh, the Fortuna, you guys said I did the Fortuna wrong, but here's my thing with the Fortuna. Um, when I load it, I would expect the whatever I load to go down to the bottom and just sort of go along the bottom. You guys were like, well, the Fortuna gets an honorable mention. I'm going to give it an honorable mention. The problem also with the Fortuna is it is a high-sided trailer. The Flygel is a low-sided trailer, which means that smaller harvesters can make use of it. I like that. If I want an all-mod farm, I'm going to need a low-sided trailer. I might as well have a Flygel. It also has a little top that adds more capacity. And you can open and close the top, and it looks really cool. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm liking the Flygel. The Fortuna, I'm just going to give it an honorable mention. It's a decent thing. It's just not super. The Cat, I'm just going to give it a mention to. All I did was rebrand the AgroLiner trailer. I mean, put some more, please put some more effort into it, especially when you make it an 80,000 liter trailer, make it bigger. The Australian trailer is 65,000 liters. I like it, it is kind of neat. Um, you do clip through bits of it, but whatever. Um, I say whatever because there, there's a point at which you just have to accept things like this. Um, it is giant trailer. <laughs> If you're running the Australian map, or if you're running a really large map, it's a great thing, but once you get beyond five trailers, it starts to tip over while turning. Just something I noticed when I had my road train. Um, but it allows you to make silly road trains, which is awesome. I'm gonna give it an honorable mention. That leaves this little trailer. This is smaller than the in-game trailer, but it has a little top on it. And then we got the Flagel. Um, and they're really competing against, remember, the container handling pack from season one. Well, I've come to a decision about that container handling pack. I don't like it so much. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it that much. I like that short agro liner, and I really like that Flagel. Ironically, that's why they're actually in my LP farm. Um, I'm going to give an award to both of them, and I'm going to actually have them displace the container handling pack. If I need containers, I'll use the hook lift pack from now on, because um, it's easier. But I like the look of that agro liner behind my truck, and I like that flygo, because the flygo is just a neat little toy. Uh, honorable mention for the Fortuna, dishonorable mention for that thing over there. Uh, mention for the cat, dishonorable mention for the road trailers there, the... the ugly green ones and an honorable mention for the Australian road train all right we'll be back with our next mod category welcome to another one of those dual categories of front-end loaders uh, we've got front-end loaders that are tractors and front-end loaders that are not tractors so we gave an award to this case last time and then this season I discovered that there is an absolute disaster with that front three-point to the point that it doesn't actually work with stuff like the Cavernland front thing at all. Um, so it's actually terrible. Uh, my mistake. Uh, this season we have an interesting collection. What are you doing over there, Fiat? Anyway, uh, we have the Bobcat. Bobcat came with a bunch of extra utensils um, that you can buy. Uh, we got the uh, case. Comfort King? Yes. Case Comfort King. <laughs> uh, front end loader. We have a big cat. 345B excavator. I didn't buy the bucket. We have a cat telehandler. We have a Ford 5000 front loader. We've got a Manitou telehandler. And we have a Fiat 8090 front loader. We also have the MTZ90, which has that as its front attachment thingy and then we have this John Deere which when you get inside you can press keypad 9 uh, wait we have to add the brackets there we go break dip, 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 dip. there there now it's a front end loader <laughs> yeah okay so let's let's deal with 
this guy here. Um, it goes up against the 345B and it wins still. 345B gets an honorable mention. It's a decent vehicle. It works well, but oh, it's complicated and usages are limited. I mean, versus this guy. I mean, you see, you've seen me use this cat to correct bad spawning. You've seen me use it to correct flipped over vehicles. And it's just a simple, intuitive piece of equipment to use. This 345B is not, um, but it does get an honorable mention because it does work. So that is good. All right, that leaves um, uh, telehandlers. We got the cat telehandler, the Manitou telehandler. This cat telehandler has like a turbo on it. Like it starts out slow while accelerating, then it's just like, boom, takes off like a rocket ship. Hate that. Manitou has a good linear acceleration to it. I like that. Um, the Manitou also comes with a whole bunch of utensils, uh, whereas the cat uses the in-game telehandler stuff. So we're going to give uh, the telehandler award to the Manitou telehandler. Uh, the cat gets a... Uh, mention. Yeah, I'll just give it a mention. So Manitou wins the Telehandler Award. Cat gets a mention. All right, tractors. We got the MTZ. We got the John Deere, the class, uh, case. I'm not going to talk about that yet. Uh, we got the Ford, and we got the Fiat. Um, the problem with the John Deere is you can have a bucket on there, and you can make the arm disappear, and the bucket stays hovering. It's really annoying. I don't like that. Um, so, yeah, no, um, however, as a tractor, it works, which is good. Um, I'm going to give it a, a honorable mention. I'll give it an honorable mention because it works. Um, it's just not the best in the world. It is a nice model, though. The MTZ, as a tractor, it is fine. And then you hook it up to its front-end loader, and it's works as a front-end loader. Problem. You can't take that off of that, no matter what you do, without resetting the tractor. You can't actually detach it. You try, and it says it's not all the way down. And you're like, I've got it all the way down. And the MTZ says, no, you don't. That's annoying. It gets a mention, because it doesn't have its front-end loader properly configured. That annoys me. The case, Comfort King, front loader. Um, honorable mention. It looks really nice. It, it does. It looks, it just looks nice. Um, and, and there's really nothing physically wrong with it. It's just an older piece of equipment. It has its own bucket, which is smaller than the normal bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable mention. Um, no, I take that back. Just give it a mention. I'll mention it because, I mean, really when it comes down to it, I just take this Ford here, which is also an older style, and it uses the in-game bucket, which is bigger. So why not use this Ford? The Ford is a nice-looking vehicle. It's got three points on the back. Um, interesting little cab thing going on, but um, it, it works. It works well. I, I've used it on the LP farm. And it, and it runs, and I like it. It's, yay, good for it. Uh, we'll give it an honorable mention. Fiat. This little Fiat. There was, there was, again, nothing super wrong with the Fiat, but it did have extras, like Numpad 9. Oop, that out of the way. Numpad, Numpad 9 added that, that front piece. Um, Numpad 0 made the front loader disappear, which was a problem because it does the same thing as the uh, John Deere in that case. Numpad 7, we can change our tires. 6 gets the wide tires. So it, it had it had all kinds of little extras. That's really cool. I, I do like that. Same problem as John Deere, though. You can make that front, load, that front loader arm disappear and have your bucket hovering in midair, which is stupid. Uh, but it has extras, so I'll give it an honorable mention because it has all kinds of extras. There we go. There's my there's my thing there. Let's come over here to the Bobcat. The Bobcat can't really compete against the tractors because it's not a tractor. 
it can't really compete against the Cat 980H because that 980H just, it's a giant piece of equipment and it's, yeah. But the Bobcat is important. It's a good, good, good mod. It's got great um, utensils. It has great attachments. I know they're attachments, but just get over it. Um, it's got great attachments. It's a pain in the butt to steer, but that's just my own problem. And I like it. It works well. It's neat. It, there's nothing really physically wrong with this Bobcat. So, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? Well, that guy is gone. He is not going to take keep his award. He loses his award. The 980 keeps its award. That means I don't have an award for front end loader tractors. You know what that means? I guess technically I really should make that Ford move up, but I don't. Well, telehandlers, the Manitou gets the award, the cat gets a mention. The Comfort King is a mention. The MTZ is a mention. The John Deere is an honorable mention. The Fiat is an honorable mention. And they're really honorable mentions because of that disappearing loader arm. Which ticks me off when you have a hovering bucket. Based purely on all of that, the Ford gets the award. Ford 5000 is going to walk away with the award for the best tractor front end loader. And then we're going to have a new, like, overarching award for front-end loaders. So we have the category of tractor, which is won by the Ford 5000. The category of telehandler, which is run by the Manitou. We have the category of heavy equipment, which is won by the 980H. And then there's the overall best front loader for your farm. That goes to the Bobcat. Hands down, it is the best front loader to have on your farm. Um, it just does a little bit of everything. It's not the biggest. It's not the fastest. Uh, it can't do everything, but darn it, it can do a very good job on your farm, handling a lot of jobs, especially if you have to, you know, whatever. You, you, can, you can find a use for this Bobcat. So there we go. Bobcat is the overall front-end loader. 980H is heavy front-end loaders. Ford 5000 is tractor front-end loaders. Manitou is telehandler front-end loaders. And we'll be back with our next category.